The reputation of the Kalashnikov rifle has long been established as one of the most legendary firearms in human history. But is everything so smooth with the history of its creation and its inventor? Let's find out today how the Kalashnikov rifle managed to gain such a huge popularity in the war market, which myths about it are true and which are not, and whether it is related to Nazi Germany in any way. Interested? Then subscribe and watch the video until the end. Mikhail Kalashnikov can truly be called a hero forged in the fire of World War II. He was born in 1919 and began his life as a simple peasant boy who at the time did not even think about the global fame waiting for him. After reaching adulthood and joining the Red Army, he was sent to the front of the Great Patriotic War. The experience gained during combat operations pushed Kalashnikov to the idea of creating a reliable and easy to maintain rifle. Later, after returning from the war, Mikhail sat down, scratched his head and began creating his first Kalashnikov rifle for the 7.62x39 cartridge. As Kalashnikov said himself, a soldier made a weapon for a soldier. I was an ordinary soldier and know well the difficulties faced in military life. When refining its design, I visited military units, consulted with specialists, and the soldiers told me what they liked and what needed to be improved. It turned out to be a simple, reliable and effective weapon. The AK works in any condition, reliably fires after being on the ground, in the swamp, falls from a height onto a hard surface. It is very simple this rifle, but I want to say that making something simple is sometimes much more difficult than making something complicated. Mikhail Kalashnikov repeatedly emphasized that his invention was initially intended for the defense of the motherland. Mikhail began working on his first rifle in 1944 when he was just 25 years old. Kalashnikov studied the experience of other countries in the field of rifles and analyzed their designs to create his own weapon. The first prototypes developed by him were successfully tested in 1946. Based on the results of the tests and feedback from military specialists, Kalashnikov made improvements to the design of the rifle to make it more efficient and reliable as well as to meet the strict standards of military commission. After minor adjustments to his design, in 1947, a weapon designated Kalashnikov Automatic Rifle 1947 model, hence the abbreviation AK-47 was adopted by the Soviet Army. This weapon combined simplicity, reliability and excellent lethality which immediately attracted the attention of military experts. The advantage of the Kalashnikov over all other rifles of those years was not only in its technical characteristics but also that it was easily accessible for mass production. In simple terms, any country capable of organizing production had the opportunity to equip its armed forces with a reliable and effective rifle. In the turbulent development of the Cold War, the AK-47 became a symbol of power and might. The Soviet government actively exported this weapon to its allies and countries where the struggle for independence was taking place. The reliability of the AK-47 was proven on battlefields around the world which ultimately gave it legendary status. However, the success of the AK-47 was not limited to socialist-oriented countries. In the conditions of military conflicts, where ease of maintenance was the most important characteristic, this rifle found its admirers even among those who opposed the Soviet Union. For example, during the Soviet-Afghan War from 1979 to 1989, Afghan Mujahideen, supported by various countries including the USA and Pakistan, used the AK-47 as their main firearm against Soviet troops. Or Iraq, which after various conflicts, including the war with Iran in the 1980s, acquired a large number of Kalashnikov rifles. Libya, Egypt, Yugoslavia and many others are also on the list. Mass production of the Kalashnikov was organized in various countries and over time, AK-47 modifications appeared in the armed forces of almost every corner of the planet as the weapon worked in severe frosts as well as during the strongest sandstorms. However, many mysteries and questions still surround the creation of this excellent weapon. One such question is whether Kalashnikov actually invented this rifle or simply copied the design from the German STG-44 assault rifle invented by the renowned German arms designer Hugo Schmeiser in 1942. Rumors of plagiarism are fueled by the fact that after the war, 
more than 50 samples of the STG-44 rifle were transported to Izhevsk, where the AK-47 was developed for technical analysis. In addition to the rifles, more than 10,000 pages of technical documents about the STG-44 were sent to the factory. Naturally, this led to rumours that the Kalashnikov simply made slight modifications to the STG-44 and released its own rifle, the AK-47. It is well known that after the occupation of the city of Seoul by Allied forces, weapons production in Germany was banned, and a bit later, in 1946, Hugo Smyser and his family were offered to go to the Ural factories, which produced weapons as a consultant. It is also known that Schmeiser lived in Izhevsk for some time, and it was after this that the creation of our Kalashnikov was completed. Yes, there is a certain external resemblance between these two rifles. Both have a high front sight, the gas tube is located above the barrel, and both weapons have a curved magazine. This resemblance likely spawned a myth about the AK-47, extensively borrowing components and design ideas from the STG-44. Kalashnikov might have based his rifle on the German design, but the AK-47 is an original invention which is completely different from the German model not only in its tactical and technical characteristics, but also in its internal mechanisms. Practically all parts and important components of the AK-47 are completely different from the STG-44. Moreover, even the principle of disassembly of these automatic rifles is absolutely different. The difference is visible everywhere, from the locking mechanism and the bolt re-engagement in the AK-47 to the tilt in the STG-44. The fire mode selectors on the STG and AK are completely different, and despite their similarity, the trigger mechanisms also have different practical implementations. If you consider each part of the rifle separately, you will find nothing in common between them. As for the ammunitions of these rifles, they do have an external resemblance as do many other types of ammunition worldwide. This is not surprising since this bullet shape is recognized as the most successful in all ballistic characteristics. The AK-47 is known to use a 7.62 by 39mm cartridge, while the STG-44 used a 7.92 by 33 cartridge. The similar caliber can also be easily explained as before the creation of such weapons, various rifles with a 7.62 caliber were the primary armament. The principle of operation of the automatics in both samples, as in most semi-automatic and automatic rifles of that time, is based on the use of powder gas pressure vented through a channel in the barrel wall. However, the reciprocating motion of the bolt carrier in the STG-44 occurs inside the receiver leading to increased friction of the moving bolt carrier against the internal surfaces of the receiver. A similar part of the AK-47 moves not inside the receiver, but above it on two guides, which is the most advantageous solution for the system's operability in case of increased contamination of the internal mechanisms of the weapon. The charging handles of the AK and STG are located on different sides. The locking mechanisms of both rifles are also different. The STG-44 locks with a tilt in the vertical plane, while the AK-47 locks with a rotation. The design of the Kalashnikov's bolt provides for preliminary extraction of the cartridge case during the unlocking process, a feature the German rifles lack, negatively impacting its reliability. The disassembly of the rifles for cleaning and lubrication also has nothing in common. For the STG-44, the main action during this assembly is separating the stock from the receiver. For the AK-47, the stock is inseparable from the receiver and all main mechanisms are removed from the rifle after taking off the receiver cover. For a clearer comparison, let's compare these two rifles by their characteristics. The Kalashnikov fires a 7.62 by 39mm cartridge, while the STG-44 uses a similar cartridge and named 7.92 by 33mm Kurtz. Regarding rate of fire, these two rifles are somewhat similar, with the Kalachnikov having 600 shots per minute versus 500 shots for the STG-44. Both weigh not too differently from each other, 4.3 kilograms for the AK and 4.6 kilograms for the STG respectively. The effective firing range for the Kalashnikov is 350 to 850 meters, while for the STG-44, it varies from 300 to 600 meters depending on the firing mode, and both of these options typically come with a 30-round magazine. 
Indeed, one could say that the AK-47 indeed copied many elements from various weapon models, including some from the STG-44. But this was not done to intentionally copy the weapon, but to collect the best that had been developed in the field of automatic weapons at the time. Thanks to this ability to assess and choose the best, Kalashnikov managed to create such a magnificent weapon, which has been used by countries all over the world for more than 50 years without becoming obsolete. It's also worth noting that if Kalashnikov copied the German STG-44 rifle, why then was the production of this weapon not continued and the STG-44 can only be found in private collections or museums while the Kalashnikov not only continued its existence but is constantly being modified, turning into an increasingly formidable weapon each time. Speaking of modifications, let's talk about this now. After all, the 21st century has already seen many different new versions of the Kalashnikov. Each new version improves something, changes the caliber in some, and other technical components in others. All this is done to keep up with various modern weapons from other countries. To understand all this, it's worth first looking at the advantages and disadvantages of the Kalashnikov. One of the advantages, of course, is its relatively low cost. Compared to other rifle models, it offers a good price-to-quality ratio. Thanks to its popularity and mass production, the AK-47 is available to a wide range of potential owners. Another advantage of the AK-47 is its simple construction. The rifle consists of a relatively small number of parts, making it very easy to assemble, disassemble and repair. Even a non-specialist can easily master all the necessary skills for maintaining this rifle. Another plus of the AK-47 is its versatility. It can be used for various purposes, from close combat to accurate shooting at long distances. The rifle can be equipped with various devices and fittings depending on the task it needs to solve. But these are all general statements. For the drawbacks, I decided to turn to those who have used the Kalashnikov in reality. One of the less positive aspects can be considered the excessive power of the gas engine, which leads to the rifle shaking when firing long bursts of more than two or three rounds without firm fixation of the weapon. Inevitably, the sight gets thrown off. Because of this, the real effective firing range of bursts does not exceed 300 meters, although in some cases, it is possible to shoot single rounds up to 900 meters. Additionally, minor design flaws can be noted such as the inconvenient fire selector that emits a loud, distinctive click when switched, or the short sight radius, reducing the accuracy of single shots. Also, among the drawbacks is again the enormous popularity of the Kalashnikov, as the rifle is not only used by the good guys, but also by various terrorist groups around the world. For example, among the latest modifications and versions of the Kalashnikov rifle is the AK-308, capable of firing NATO 7s. Another recent version of the AK-15, which fires the standard 7.62 by 39, but it's just a minor modification of the AK-12, which originally fires 5.45mm cartridges and in theory could be adapted to any cartridge used in modern rifles from various countries. And by the way, since in this video we try to understand whether the Kalashnikov is a copy of any weapon, have there been any interesting clones or copies of it over the years? Yes, even Russia's main ideological and geopolitical rival has its own version of the Kalashnikov called the AK Alpha. There's not much to say here, it's made American style, pretty, all in plastic, intended for the civilian market and not at all adapted for real combat. By the way, even its automatics were completely reworked and have nothing in common with the original Kalash. Essentially, this weapon is made for people who wanted to add to the legendary weapon of the scary Russians to their collection. But if the American rifle just slightly resembled our Kalashnikov externally, China did not stand aside and created its version of the AK-47 called Type 56, which can look very similar to the original Soviet model. This Chinese rifle is perhaps the most accurate and mass-produced copy of the original AK in the world. The Type 56 was produced under a Soviet license on Soviet equipment that was sent to China in the early 1950s. So if talking about the most audacious copy, but at the same time the most plausible, China as always outdid everyone in this regard. And in the end, it doesn't matter much who stole from whom, 
the Kalashnikov took a bit from the German STG-44, the STG-44 took a bit from something else. China outright copied the designs. In any case, the winners aren't judged, and the Kalashnikov rifle is undoubtedly one of the most popular rifles in the world. Was it luck? In the rapidly evolving arms market, I don't think it's about luck. It's about Mikhail Kalashnikov, who once invented something because of which I'm making this video for you. Share in the comments any other interesting facts about the Kalashnikov you know, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new videos.